gentleman from Louisiana. Recognized for five minutes. Here's the quote. Your public safety as a resident is dramatically impacted by your district attorney and whether he or she is a George Soros funded rogue prosecutor or a law and order prosecutor by your police department and by whether lo the local politicians support and adequately fund the police and prosecutor's offices. It goes on. This is why the Soros rogue prosecutor movement has concentrated its fire at identifying, recruiting, and funding candidates for local district attorney races by elevating pro-criminal and anti-victim zealots into office the rogue prosecutor movement destabilizes the safety of our communities, mm -hmm. treats criminals as victims and police as the criminals, and ignores real victims. America's sky-high murder rates, for example, are almost exclusively cabined in cities run by Democrats and with Democrat district attorneys, many of whom are bought and paid for by George Soros. Why are we beginning our crime wave field hearing to New York City? Because this is one of the most egregious examples in America, Alvin Bragg is the poster child for exactly what was just described. Mm. Uh, Ms. Ms. Brain, I want to thank you for your uh, compelling testimony today and uh, sharing the shocking and tragic story of your son, uh, Sergeant Hassan Korea's gang assault and vicious murder by four criminals he did not know. In your written uh, statement submitted today, you wrote this. You said, quote, D.A. Bragg has demonstrated over and over again that he has no regard or concern for human life or victims of crime by instituting his ADAs to not prosecute violent recidivists and ultimately release them back to the streets to victimize and terrorize more innocent New Yorkers, unquote. Uh, you heard Mr. Nadler and Mr. Kessler and others share their manipulated statistics this morning, suggesting that New York City is, quote, one of the safest big cities in America. Mm -hmm. But uh, you and other, North, uh, and other New Yorkers don't agree with that, I know. Mr. Holden just said, uh, our people are afraid to go anywhere because of, this is the worst lawlessness in the city's history. How do you respond to these claims that this is just a magical, safe city right now? Well, you know, um, <clears throat> I think that the average New Yorker doesn't care nothing about no statistics, okay? Especially in the black and brown communities. We care about the mothers who have to visit the morgue to identify their dead child's body. We care about the mothers who have to lean into the coffin and watch them lower that top down on that child and they know they'll never see them again. We care about being able to let our child go out to the park and play without getting shot in the stroller. We care about not getting raped in elevators. We don't care nothing about your statistics. You cannot convince us to not believe our lying eyes with your numbers, all right? Because we see it with our very eyes, day in and day out, especially in the poor black and brown communities where none of you in this room would even step foot in. Ms. Brame, you're, you're so right. And they're changing the subject. They're doing their best to change the subject here and obscure mm -hmm. the facts because the facts are difficult for them to face. The objective fact is that Manhattan has instituted pro-crime, anti-victim policies that have resulted in an increase in violent crime and created this dangerous situation in the community. And in America's once great cities that was the symbol of freedom and opportunity and liberty. Mm -hmm. According to the NYPD data, New York City saw a 23% surge in major crimes in one year mm -hmm. since Alvin Bragg took over. That is the fact. We have a violent crime epidemic here, and everybody in America knows it because we see the videos mm -hmm. played out on our television, mm -hmm. local news, every single night of what's going on here in the city. I just want to say this, and I, I'm almost out of time, but I, I've shared in this committee before the long list of statements from leading Democrats in Congress and the leading Democrats on this very committee who specifically and aggressively called for the defunding of the, of the police. And as a result, in 2020 in New York City, officials cut $1 billion from the police department's 2021 budget. These are the completely foreseeable and obvious effects of these soft on crime policies that are advanced by Soros funded DAs. Alvin Bragg is, in my view, probably the worst offender. And they're trying to manipulate the facts, they're trying to change it, but I thank you all for being here. I yield the remainder of my time. Committee will be in order. The gentleman yields.